Welcome to the Cabral House Call. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor, and I'm here today to answer your wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. So the first question of the day is, so what one food would I cut out right now to help people with weight loss? Like what would be the major thing? So the major thing with weight loss is always what's affecting the blood sugar levels, what's affecting insulin? You know, why aren't people able to tap into body fat like a lot of other people can, like an ectomorph versus an endomorph? You know, what is it about not being able to tap into body fat and use that as a fuel source? So the main thing is we have to regulate blood sugar levels. That's the first place to start. So does that mean you can't eat any carbohydrates? No, it doesn't. But what it does mean is that you should really look at eliminating as much as, if not all, refined-based sugars or carbohydrates. And that at least starts with beverages or drinks. Any beverage, no matter how healthy you think it to be, whether it's a green juice or you know whatever it is, make sure that that has single digit or less serving of sugar on it. Meaning if you look at a label of something and look at it that it's not just one serving or two servings because you buy a bottle of something, sometimes it's two servings or three servings. That means you're getting two or three times the amount of sugar listed on that label. So that's one of the little tricky things that some companies do. Very important that it should be like three grams, four grams, five grams, really no more than the five, six grams of sugar total for whatever you're consuming, it's just too much after that. It's gonna to start to rise or raise those blood sugar levels, and that's gonna allow your body to burn sugar instead of body fat while you're consuming that. And plus, if you don't use that sugar, it will turn to body fat. That's a very easy way for your body to store fuel or store sugar, which your body can then use at a later time. So what I would say is first look at everything you're consuming drink-wise or beverage-wise and eliminate all of it except low sugar uh, varieties, which would be water, lemon water, herbal-based teas like ginger tea, green, like true green juices that don't have any sugar in them, meaning like no added fruit. You're just getting your sugar from your celery, your spinach, your ginger, your lemon, your whatever it might be, all of those are fine. But when people do a lot of juices, they're juicing like three or four apples and all of these things, it's adding too much sugar. So I don't want this to be a juice discussion. What I want you to think about is just at least first start with making sure that you're not getting any easily quick digestible sugar from any of your drinks, okay? And that includes lattes as well. You don't want a drink that has like a vanilla flavored almond milk or something like that that contains 20 grams of sugar for each one. So look at that first, that's the first place to start. How much weight loss is healthy per week? So basically, how much weight can you lose in a week? And again, this is gonna vary because a lot of times we just say like, you know, drink eight glasses of water a day or just lose one pound or two pounds a week, but you wanna look at a little bit more specifically for you. And that's look at your own body weight. If you weigh 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 300 pounds, you can assume that that would be different in terms of calories, in terms of water, and in terms of weight loss. You know, that just makes sense. So what I would say is I'm gonna do this in two parts. One is your initial weight loss. So if you start a program like mine or another really sound weight loss program, you're gonna lose more weight the first week and the second week and the third week and that will start to taper off. That's completely normal and one of the reasons is you're releasing inflammation in your body and when you release inflammation in your body, along goes a lot of that toxic water weight. And people say, oh, well, that's a lot of that's just water weight. Yeah, a lot of it is. And that's actually water weight that you shouldn't be holding onto and it's inflammation-based water weight. You don't want that, that's toxic. That will never come back. Your body's not dehydrated. It's just holding onto water that shouldn't be there. It's like if you get hit in the arm and your arm swells, all that swelling, you just want to calm down and release from your body. So. In a program like mine or the Dr. Ball Detox, something like that, you can plan to easily lose five pounds or more your first week. And I think that's totally acceptable and totally healthy because again, you're releasing that inflammation. So I look for the first three week period, somewhere 10 pounds or more, 10 to 20 pounds in that first three weeks. Again, depends on the amount of weight you have to lose. If you only need to lose five to 10 pounds, your weight loss might be like three to five the first week and then another two or three pounds. After that initial period of weight loss, let's say 10 to 20 pounds in your first three weeks or so, after that, what I would look for is about 1% of your body weight per week of weight loss. So this is where we can customize it. You weigh 150 pounds, about a 1.5 weight loss per week. You weigh 250 pounds, about 2.5 pounds per week. So just literally kind of carry that decimal for how much you weigh and just take 1% of your body weight. That's the safe range. But also it's important to not look at it as only or any one week. People get so discouraged when they step on the scale 
and they see that their weight didn't change or it only changed a half a pound and they wanted to lose 1.5 pounds. Well, look at it this way. Over the course of a month, if your goal is 1.5 pounds per week, you want six pounds weight loss over the course of those four weeks, the month. So, or sorry, six pounds. So 1.5 times four is you get six. So what I would look at is, one week could be one pound, another week could be three pounds, another week is two pounds, you know. So you wanna look at it in a range of, have I lost six pounds every month? You know, if your goal is 1.5 a week. That would be an easy, safe way to look at it. You can lose a little bit more depending on how aggressive you go at it, that's up to you. But the other thing is, your weight's gonna change day to day, so do not weigh yourself every day, or if you do, don't get discouraged. Look at it on like a Monday and Friday, rather than every single day of the week. Just make sure you see that gradual trend over a month going down. That's the safest, psychologically and physiologically, way of looking at it. All right, so someone's plateaued, and they're looking to jumpstart their weight loss. This is pretty much gonna to happen to everyone at some point down the road. And the reason is that there are different mechanisms in the body that try to create homeostasis or equilibrium within the body. And what happens is if you've been dieting for too long, meaning taking your calories low for too long, that will work, but then the body will typically stop. It will just slow its metabolism down to a range that keeps up with your low caloric intake. Or if you exercise too much and don't eat enough, you're basically, you're just dropping your metabolism, believe it or not, in the long run, because you're not giving the body the, what it needs. So it needs nutrients, it just doesn't need calories, it needs really good food. And that's the reason why after my plan specifically, and again, you can use other plans, it's not just about my plan, but what I would say is this, after 21 days, we strategically add in once a week cheat meals. We call them cheat meals just because it's just not healthy foods that you would typically eat. You can call it whatever you want. So some people don't like the word cheat, they like reward meals. I'd prefer not to be a reward meal. What you're doing is you're just eating your favorite foods that not might, be, might not be healthy foods. That's it, you can look at it however you want. So doing this, and the, the cheat meals should actually be carbohydrate based. So that's gonna increase or improve leptin levels. That's gonna tell your body that it's basically not in starvation mode. So if you're not doing that right now, you certainly do need to add back in cheat meals. And you may actually see your weight gradually rise for the day after you have that cheat meal. Don't be too concerned about that. That can be simply water weight gain, inflammation-based gain from foods that maybe not the healthiest. But again, you could overeat on healthy carbohydrates if you do want, and that could be your cheat meal as well. You don't have to eat unhealthy foods. It's just that a lot of people do have cravings for some of their favorite foods that they may feel deprived from, so I just let them have that, and I think that's totally fine. I enjoy going out and having pasta sometimes, or some of my own favorite foods as well, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, as long as you got to your point of doing the initial three weeks to four weeks of really intense work so that you've kind of pushed past that hump. So what I would say, that's the first step, and then making sure that you're not lowering your metabolism any other way, like over-exercising. We'll talk about that in the future as well. Just normal exercise, 30 minutes a day, 40 minutes a day, not doing anything too intense, like an hour and a half a day, which is probably gonna be a bit much in the long run. Every once in a while, no problem, but in the long run, probably a bit intense. So what I look at is just making sure you are including the once a week cheat, that you're not overdoing it, that you're getting enough sleep. I mean, there's so many different factors, but do make sure that you're taking care of all the lifestyle-based things and don't try to drop your calories down more, okay? We'll talk about how to reduce your calories in a future um, episode or show, but let's just talk about metabolism for today. <laughs> that is all the questions for today. Keep the questions coming. Every day we'll be answering more of your questions, bringing you more episodes of Cabral House Call. Thank you for just tuning into the Cabral Concepts. I wanna make you aware of a really fun contest we have going on right now in January. And what we're gonna do is we're actually giving away over $2,000 in prizes. This is amazing stuff. This is all things that people use in my own Boston practice, and it's completely free to enter. All you have to do is simply download, subscribe, and review this podcast. Just you know, give it, hopefully, five stars, or as many stars as you can give it, right on iTunes. Very, very simple. To get the full details, simply go to cabralpodcast.com.